There are two types of overlap that we talk about in the context of valence bond theory that are profoundly different because the extent to which the orbitals are overlapping is very different in these two cases. And as a result, we get bonds with very different energies. One is much stronger than the other. The first type of overlap or bonding that we talk about in this context is known as sigma bonding. And I'll either use the word sigma or the Greek letter sigma to represent a sigma bond. Sigma bonding is characterized by head-on overlap of the orbitals involved and cylindrical symmetry, meaning we can look down the kind of bonding axis and we'll see a circle. Single bonds in Lewis structures are universally sigma bonds. As you can think of any single line you see between bonded atoms or the first bond of a double or triple bond as a sigma bond. And three examples of sigma bonds are shown for you on this slide. So here, for example, in A, we have two s orbitals overlapping with each other. Here's the overlapping region. And you can imagine that if we turned this to kind of look down the bonding axis so that the nuclei were sort of eclipsing one another, we would see a circle, right, since each of the s orbitals is individually spherical. A similar situation is happening in B, but we've replaced one of the s orbitals with a p orbital. So we have a region here of overlap that's still cylindrically symmetric. If I imagine rotating around like this, we will see a circle along the bonding axis. And of course, we can play a similar game by replacing the other s orbital with a p orbital and see here in this region of overlap, let me change colors to highlight that a little bit better, we again get cylindrical symmetry. And the p orbitals are pointed directly at one another. This is a hallmark of sigma bonding, the spherical, uh, the uh, cylindrical or circular symmetry and head-on overlap of the orbitals with the two p orbitals here pointed directly at each other or an s orbital involved so that, of course, that sphere has to be sort of head-on. It has no head with whatever orbital it's overlapping with. That's a sigma bond. If we think about the p orbitals, there's another way we can imagine them overlapping, and this involves the two orbitals in a side-on fashion, where the axes of the p orbitals are aligned parallel, but there's overlap of the two lobes above and below the bonding axis. This is what's known as a pi bond. Pi bonds involve side-on overlap, as we just said, and these are the second and third bonds of double and triple bonds, where we have a multiple bonding situation. It's actually only possible, only geometrically possible, to have one sigma bond, the remaining two bonds, are pi bonds. So here, for example, we can see the region of overlap in this pi bond between two p orbitals is here and here. And now we don't have cylindrical symmetry because if I look at this from the side, it's going to look like two p orbitals, right? Or it's just going to look like one p orbital, the two p orbitals sort of eclipsing each other, right? If I rotate my point of view, the picture I'm going to see is like this, and I no longer have the cylindrical symmetry that I had in the, in the sigma bonding case. And so this is fundamentally different because of that symmetry difference, and the extent of overlap here is quite a bit different. Generally, pi bonds are weaker than sigma bonds. We can see that reflected in these bond energies where I don't exactly double in going from a CC single to a CC double bond energy. That's because the pi bond in the CC double bond is weaker than a CC sigma bond. This is a very important type of bonding to recognize, though, because pi electrons are very often reactive in molecules. So again, just to summarize, the key hallmark of pi bonds is really this side-on overlap of p orbitals, and we don't have that spherical symmetry or cylindrical symmetry that we see in the case of sigma bonding. Sigma bonding involves a head-on overlap, and I draw your attention here really to see where we can highlight the difference between sigma and pi bonding in very stark terms with two p orbitals. This is absolutely sigma bonding with the p orbital lobes pointed directly at each other. When those lobes are aligned sort of side by side like this, this is a pi bonding situation. Let's practice by counting the number of sigma and pi bonds in this molecule, butadiene, which is used to make synthetic rubber. So let's start with the sigma bonds. And it's good to start with the sigma bonds because any pair of linked atoms, any pair of covalently linked atoms will have one and only one sigma bond between them. So let's highlight those in purple. So to identify the sigma bonds, all we're doing is really counting the number of linkages. I'm gonna highlight one of the lines between each pair of atoms here. 
because there's one and only one sigma bond between any given pair of linked atoms. And then we're just going to count the number of purple highlightings we ended up with. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sigma bonds in this molecule, counting the CC and CH bonds. And for the pi bonds, we're looking for double or triple bonds, right? Keeping in mind that the second and third bonds of a double and triple bond are pi bonds. So here, for example, we have at this double bond, one pi bond, and at this double bond, another pi bond. So in butadiene, we've got two pi bonds total. It's that simple. However, that said, you know, the, the point of this problem is not just to count the sigma and pi bonds. An uh, important point that follows after doing this is now I have a mental picture of what the molecule looks like. I've got the sigma framework, if you like, highlighted in purple, and I've got the pi electrons. And when I start thinking about reactivity, where my eye goes are the electrons highlighted in orange because these pi electrons are the most reactive in this molecule. And I'm thinking about giving those electrons away as an important mode of reactivity in this molecule. And this goes back to the corollary on the previous slide. Pi electrons are generally more reactive than sigma electrons because pi overlap is weaker than sigma overlap and pi bonds are lower in energy than sigma bonds, roughly speaking. 